Oh my goodness. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That's okay, here. Yeah? I'm going to be watching the second day. This is going to be the second day of the scoring phase for the uh, CBL, Asia Division. There is no scoring phases for the MENA nor the South America Division, as of not very many teams, so to say. We have 50 teams um, today. We do have... We do have some bad news, though. So, from the top, we have uh, QJ versus NOP, followed by the FS versus uh, PBJ in the A um, in the A group, B group, going for ABC versus Xeon, and followed by JKKT versus MJY. Then uh, for the group C, we have CBL versus TEA, T, I'm just going to call them T, followed by ERG versus ACE. Then in the D group, we have EFF versus TID and TG versus, um, versus TANG. So the bad news is, is ABC gave up against Xeon, so they automatically win. We also have another person, ERG, gave up their battle against Ace. So, those are the bad news for today. But, other than that... <clears throat> well, other than that... Today, we are going to be watching... Starting off, we have... Starting... Well, obviously, you can see... Because apparently, I can't. I've got some notes here, though. Um, first off, our first match will be... EFF versus TID. Uh, these guys are called EFFG Holy Holy Juke Earth Federation G and TID, which is Tigelup Tigel Tigel Tigelup writing. I'm not sure if that translate. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's uh, another word in a different, different language, but I'll try my best. Then we'll be watching. Um, then we'll be watching the. Sorry, we're watching Group D first match, and then we're going to be watching Group uh, B for the second match, which is uh, JKK versus um, MJY, which are uh, Jet Ultras. Versus uh, Manja Ying. Ying? I think it's Ying. But those are the matches for today. We've got a little bit of time before the first match does kick off. Let's hope, wish these guys luck. Hope you guys enjoy my commentary. And for the first set of matches, if you're looking for QJ versus NOP, you can go have a look at. Um, XXX1NG, if you're looking for the... Ah, oh, man, this is three minutes behind, but I'm putting it in the chat anyway, and it's just like, going to be super confusing. Um, if you're looking for uh, the match at ABC versus... Yeah, that didn't come out properly, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, that did not come out properly. Holy shit. can't really... Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do it like that in the future. So, yeah, if you're looking for um, ABC versus Xeon, you can look um, look at H-U-O-O-O Triple O? Sorry. H-U-O-O-O and if you watch, and if you want to watch the CBL versus T, you can um, you can go have a look at B A E K uh, G A N G I. Back Gaijin? No. Ganji? Ganji? Back Jai Ganji? And then there's who? And I'm 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 guessing it's going to be like Zing or something, not Zing. Actually, X. I is pronounced Z, like G, or something like that. I think it's supposed to be like Zing. Zing, 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 Zing.
But other than that, we're just going to wait for the match to begin. Looks like we got Observer 005 today. First battle on underway. Alrighty. First battle gonna be on the hidden city. TDI attacking first. I'm not gonna call them the uh Tigelop. Tigelop. Tigeliop. Tigeliop writing. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna call it TDI and um TD TDI and or TID. Tid versus E F F E F F hmm, yeah Tid versus T D um yeah E F F wow very surprising the number of tier fours coming out from T um E F F um E F E F F it's very confusing how it's E F F then followed by dash E F F so um uh, that is quite uh, that's quite quite impressive. Whoa, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six muskets coming out from EFF. That is very surprising. But we also have one, two, three, four muskets coming out from T um Tid. Tid going with uh, pretty heavy on the double tier fives. We got quite a few muskets. Someone going in with the double muskets, in fact. Um uh, probably not as many muskets as I'm um, not sorry, when I say muskets, I mean like uh range units anyway. Uh actually not as many as I thought. But the tier 4 coming out from EFF will probably be important. Number of cavalry on either side seems to be in the 2-3 to three region. Double longbow for the attacking side. So, that is uh, quite a conundrum for me. Like, longbow's very good when they're on the wall. But when you lose that wall advantage, you uh, can't really do very much. I do think that the muskets on EFF has massive advantage for now. As long as they hold the A point. I believe EFF will go for a wall hold. Classically, it is very beneficial to do a wall hold, especially early on. Just simply destroying the siege towers could buy you tons of time. Just simply destroying them three times sends the timer down to basically nothing. Ooh, Treb going straight out might be low. In fact, it is bad, bad Treb. Can I finish it off? Unfortunately, no. Um, waste for Treb, but they have 14 left. So, do not be afraid to use them. Trading them for uh, trading them for Artie is always really good, but I would normally use it to take out the artillery that they themselves, uh, well, the defending team has built. We got the Falconetti Gunners, otherwise the Metallic Doors. Uh, officially, they're still called the Metallators, which is very strange since their names have been fluctuating on the official um, on the Frontier server, or just the server in general, from Falconetti, which is used by the My.com. Falconetti also concentrating. We have three different Falconetti units, uh, three different Metallator units shooting at each of the towers. Towers 
from the oh tower on the left about to go down tower in the middle did look like it was going to go down yes it will and tower on the right will go down we have a metalla lordy metalla lordy pushing the front door right now wow that is a hard ask these metalla tours are definitely safe from trebs I don't think um, I don't think a treb can actually fire at, at them in these scenarios. All of the siege towers have already gone down. We got a couple of mortars being built now. This is a good time for EFF um, muskets to shine. As here comes a bomb, doesn't destroy it, but he will give it a um, he'll he'll probably destroy it in time. We have one cauldron here on the side here. The next. Um, the next siege tower that comes up. Definitely, I would get on top of the siege tower and treb the living... Uh, treb that uh, cauldron. It is very worth it, especially if I uh, haven't shot it um, very much. First kill goes for EFF. It does look like... Uh, hmm, can't seem to spot when they died, but... Nope. Oh. Tid left the game. One of their members have accidentally DC'd. Not very good. No major engagements have happened yet, so hopefully he comes back in good order. Front gate has gone down already. Again, that cauldron is still over there, and I think another cauldron was built. Yes, it was far, far in the back here. Be a very bit difficult to place. Uh, difficult to place a C. Uh, a treb on that um yeah it actually very difficult hey good evening oh that's a new thing it's telling me that kosan's uh watching without uh audio right hand siege tower does go down again middle siege tower and left hand siege tower should be going down in quick order those metallic tours definitely making a mess of things really need to get in here though weakness whoa pike comes right in unfortunately he loses his horse and definitely looks like he might go down here giving it a good shot though pike has been classically very fast he's using his speed advantage but gets stabbed by the two spears at hunting him down Getting back into position, the Metallators have reloaded, regunned, and ready to fire. Right hand siege tower did go down in the meantime. I think the middle siege tower has is on its third res and it's getting pushed now, going to be destroyed yet again. Woof! Nothing exciting happening. Also, new lexicon. Sorry about the not responding. I was just more interested in the fact that it's telling me that Kosan was uh, not listening, and now it's telling me that he's not watching. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Whoa! We've got a noble sacrifice as they push up the ladders here. Could gain an advantage. Pike militia. It was sent up first, followed by some royal, uh, followed by some iron reapers and royal janissaries. I would reset those, uh, reset those ladders. There should be a third one. The iron reapers have been. That is the worst treb, man. You're just gonna just friendly fire yourself here. The iron reapers did clear up basically everything there. I think if I could get a kill count, hmm, doesn't look like I can. Oh, maybe. The iron reapers definitely cleave, cleave their way through the enemy there. Iron Reapers are classically some of the strongest units in this game, but they're going to come against enemy Iron Reapers. The defenders might not want to sacrifice them to Royal Janissaries, though. Royal Janissaries coming in after the um, Iron Reapers, so they should be fresh right uh, with full health, and they'll be difficult to take out. Whoop. Here they come. Iron Reapers try to smack them, but a trade is huge. Iron Reapers do come out, no, sorry, Royal Janissaries do come out on top. Now the Halberdiers at the back, just getting chopped by pieces. Their formation could not stand the test. Another set of Iron Reapers going to charge in, probably going to catch them outside of the Tiger Step, but, oh, pretty impressive, I do say. Uh, those Royal Janissaries taking quite a few hits. 
Trev coming slamming in. But the Halberdier Sergeant's not particularly phased as they pushed straight in. Probably gonna catch some more. Oh, wait, take it back. That's Shenji, friendly Shenji. Looked like there was a battle here against Iron Reapers. EFF has taken back control of the wall. No reinforcements from um, Tid. Again, gonna be very difficult as no Siege Tower has made it to the wall just yet, but the left hand Siege Tower is about to make it. The pressure from the Metallotors was quelled by the looks of it. I do think I've missed out on a couple of sections of the battle. But the wall battle it will continue yet again with one of the Siege Towers up on the wall. Finally, they might full, do a full concentration. Got four minutes left. No Metallotors concentrating on either the middle or the um, or the right hand Siege Tower. So these guys. Whoop, never mind. Hang on. This one might still go down. Whoa! Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Too shallow there. I would definitely aim further. That would have, should have been further up. Cataphracts might sally out. It'll be very interesting to see a sally out in that situation. Good pressure coming out from the Metallotors. Um, Metallotors. Actually, no. They're hitting basically nothing. Fight in the back is Iron Reapers versus Royal Janissaries with a set of Iron Reapers inside. But a Iron Reaper Death Squad is slowly winning? I take it back. The Royal Janissaries actually. Uh, Royal Janissaries with the Iron Reapers coming out on top pretty big there, taking out two Iron Reapers. Flamers win and cut down this section of Medals. I'm not sure if the Medals had support. Does look like there was a Grey Hair Garrison in the mix, but definitely cleaned up by those flamers those flamers barely protected there's just an iron reaper with some claymores mez pikeman probably the majority here whoa we also have some ball sacks on the field eff bringing out some ball sacks they might be able to do a lot of damage but against this sheer mass we have metallators also for close range support no front liners right now we've got a we got a very thin line of how about sergeants but here comes the medals medals are definitely going to hold strong. Gonna need a awesome trip here, but intercepted by the Iron Reapers. They're gonna cut them off. Iron Reapers versus Iron Reapers right now, but I think they just took a trip. Bad trip placement if the Iron Reapers were going to go in, but cut off on one side. Does look like Tid is coming coming out thin here. But they do take the wall, finally clearing up this side. The exchanges look terrible. The sheer weight of numbers. The tier fours actually coming out on top. I think the exchanges are really terrible for um, Tid right now. And even though they got a lot of units, I've been seeing way more tier fives getting smacked around um, by EFF than I have Tid smacking their um, their guys out. This could be the strategy. This could be the strategy where EFF wins by attrition winning the small battles against each of the individual tier fives. It's very interesting to see these Archer Militias. Archer Militias just shooting into the mix. Be very great to have a whole bunch of Archer Militias at the very end, just shooting like crazy, as just a sheer number should be able to win. Whoa, 2v1 here. Pike does get out. Interesting see Cataphracts fight. Cataphracts did sally out, but came back inside just now. Not sure if they got anything. Oh, got some free kills there. Good to see that there are some dead bodies to check which sides did kill. Very unfortunate that Tid now has a very hard task of only four less than yeah, three minutes thirty to go. Need to get to that B point in th three minutes. Uh, within three minutes, they also need to fight off the defenders. The defenders will cut them here, cut them off on either side of the stairs, but they're not ready on the left-hand side. They're really ready on the right-hand side, so easy, easy come down. But EFF does see that the mass here is on the left-hand side. Really going to fight it here off the bottom of the stairs. But this could be a massive trap if reinforcements comes through the center here, right up behind this entire pile. That would be massive. But we have every single one of the attackers here on this side. And we have Fort of Russia is mixed in with an Imperial Pike. Imperial Pike marches straight through the center here. Nothing's going to 
stand while the Imperial Pike marches. Medals fall and fall yet again. They try to brace. Cataphract's coming in through the center and through the top side, smacking these foes into oblivion. What a what a massacre as two sets maybe three sets of cataphracts. Probably two sets of cataphract. Let's see count. One, two, three. All three sets of cataphracts actually out on the field. Losing out heavily, I think uh, Tid only has Surf units left, and this is the important, this is the important strategy in the unit selection, being able to take fights, even even if you have weaker units. That is the strength of EFF strategy. They were able to take many fights with weaker tier units against higher tier units and wear them down to where they have the advantage getting that cost effectiveness two minutes to go we got an imperial pike out on the field quite a few of them dead only six alive imperial pikes will try to look to go through the front no point going through anywhere else we got Ford Brasio bracing this door Ford Brasio is with the longest stick in the game they are terrifying strongest brace I would also say well I mean Strongest brace. It's got the tightest brace formation in the game. That's 32 models, 32 pikes facing towards you. Be deadly. Shenji here shooting down through the center. This is going to be an excellent B. Uh, this is going to be an excellent position for the Shenji. Absolutely nothing, nothing going to come through here without getting shot to pieces. And Iron Reapers. Whoa! Almost made it all the way through. Takes a lot of damage. Claymore's going to fill in the gap now. They're going to try to force their way through. Flamers are at the front here. Need to focus. But the Claymores are definitely holding on. Nothing really terribly strong. Nothing terribly strong indeed. The Imperial Pikes did not march on through. Or they tried to and get blasted to pieces. We got some grape shots in there, but that's actually going to disrupt the Keshigs if they ever decide to come through. I'd send the Keshigs in because that Portobrasio is low. We got the Cataphracts coming through though. Cataphracts not able to make it through, but whoa! Two sets of Cataphracts going, going through. Now they selling out and that is the remainder of their forces. Oh. That's got to be painful. <laughs> Excellent job from EFF, but I also say TDI Tid doing a excellent job themselves. Tier 5s are very strong. They will able to take a lot of fights up front, but EFF definitely coming out on top winning those smaller engagements was the important Part. I think um, I think Tid coming uh, really comes down to the factor of not being able to get those siege towers up and not being able to get into position. The pressure is on to get those siege towers on. Siege every siege tower is pressure in and of itself. Able to able to get up onto that wall, get that wall advantage, being forced to take fights where you don't want them. I do think Tid also suffered from unable to place their trebs properly. And as you can see, the um, kill death was quite even through the entire exchange coming in massive near the end two battles. This section here being quite even is extraordinarily important as a mixture of low tier and high tier units was used to beat out um, to beat out Tid, who was also using a mixture of high tier and low tier units, but they were using more tier fives than they were um, than uh, the defenders were so but congratulations to EFF winning the defense let's see if they win their attack and win the matchup they're gonna score a point uh, I do believe how this works is that ma um, several matches will be played in rounds so they will constantly battle against teams they'll have up to four battles I believe uh, against other teams in the same groups and then the guy who scores the highest will move on to the elimination rounds
Alrighty. Also, I'm just going to... If you guys are interested in other match matchups, I do have these guys. Although it is three minutes away, so I'm going to have to wait three minutes, and I'll be like, then I could also place these things. But I'm watching the EFF versus TDI, um, TD. I want to say TDIA or something. TDIA. Why do I want to say TDIA? Oh yeah, CDIA because it's like a Commonwealth Bank thing. Anyway, um, <laughs> well, we're just gonna be waiting, waiting. For the next battle to start. Definitely does look like EFF got a strategy down, but it did come down to the wire there at the very end. Attrition is never really uh, good for the attackers. Attackers taking battles where they shouldn't. Or, I mean, like, they were kind of forced to take those battles. Not really much option, too. And here comes the second match of the um, of the first match, ah, yeah, second round of the first match. I gotta figure out which words I gotta use. Alrighty, gonna be looking yet again very closely because there was Claymore's very interesting unit. Claymore's can definitely turn a tide, especially when there's multiple units against each other. Send Claymore's in with Iron Reapers, and those Iron Reapers get 40, uh, 35% melee resistance, making them extraordinarily tanky but you can also use it to reinforce uh, pike lines which can be very good as well um, I didn't explain this before but EFF did seem to have a lot of muskets at the start but swapping out to pike or spear now coming out from now coming in from the attackers side we have three spears and five pikes um, Tid coming with a little bit uh, a little bit of change here. Two longbows were switched to two short bows. Longbows. Ah, wait. Someone just swapped over to the longbow just now. A lot of pole axes. In fact, I didn't see this before. We have a banner guard being chosen out for um, Tid. Let's see if they can make good use of them. Other than that, we have plenty of cataphracts. One, two, three cataphracts. Outriders filling out for more cavalry. Two cataphracts for EFF with... Oh, three cataphracts with Keshig. So, gonna be interesting. Mm, not very many Iron Reapers coming out for the... Um, not very many Iron Reapers coming out for EFF here. Sorry! A lot of Iron Reapers coming out from EFF here. Not very many Royal Janissaries. I think Royal Janissaries are much better in taking uh, multiple fights, especially consecutively like that. But the heal on the Iron Reapers could come in handy. Definitely a big pickup. If you can take out an Iron Reaper all in one go. Alrighty. We got some iron. Uh, we got some royal janissaries coming out for Tid, but no royal janissaries coming out for e um, EFF. I'm wondering how they're going to make use of the triple tier fours. Going to be interesting, interesting indeed. Um, this one here is also very interesting. You could have gone, you could have gone claymores, halberdiers, and um, claymores, halberdiers, and portabrachios. No Metallators, one Metallator from Tid, two Metallators from Tid actually, I'm miscounting here. Only two Metallators from Tid means that one of the towers will not be suppressed by Metallators, but it does look like, wow, what was trebbed over here? They tried to treb something. Probably try to treb this cauldron? Hmm, not sure. Let's look at the placement for these Metallators. Again, placing them here on the supply point, and then probably aiming around at the back here. Definitely a good strategy. Keeps them safe. I think that position's untrebable. We got a lot of Iron Pagodas here. This position is very strange, actually. This is trebable, this section here.
Ooh, EFF gets a 1v1 here with this short bow. Short bow getting absolutely bodied. And down he goes. Wow, that is impressive. EFF has the advantage on the wall. Just gonna tickle A right now. Doesn't look like um, Tid wants to fight on the wall here. They're just gonna let it go? Question mark. Second short bow moving in. Just probably just shooting that horse. More heroes coming in. Suppression on the point, which is very, uh, which can be terrifying actually. Getting hit by a Metallator, um, realistically as a hero, is one of the most annoying things. Getting chain CC'd. So, when it comes down to just a hero versus hero, Metallator or range support is very important. So those angles are great. Um, some free kills by the looks of it. They just let those, um, they just climb those village watchmen up only for them to be killed. Uh, might not matter as either, either, well, it could, it could have mattered. Again, you should never let your, never let units go for free, but all siege towers are up on the wall. Um, I, I think this is a bad situation for Tid. Mainly because there's so many avenues for EFF, but at the same time, if Tid takes small battles, again, another person, um, someone DC'd from Tid just now, and he's one of the Royal Janissary users, one of the heavy infantry. Hello, Arnanor. Arnanor? Arnanor? I'm gonna call you Arnanor. Massive Treb actually misses a lot. This uh, battle here seems to be a lost cause. Two Iron Reapers in the back versus the backside. Um, does look like they're gonna lose the Iron Reapers, catching one of the Iron Reapers by the looks of it. I think the trade was almost even if you count for partial damage to other units. But in the end, two Iron Reapers for basically nothing. Uh, I think um, Tid made the right decision not to commit for the wall in this scenario. But in the end, still losing out on those very important units. And a Greyhair Garrison also gets slapped here. Uh, taking battles where they don't need to. Sacrificing Culverins where they're not all inning it. Again, here, this Culverin at the back. One Culverin, not going to do very much. You need two Culverins in order to take down with security. Uh, one culprit really needs to be firing constantly in order to, um, in order to secure a kill on those siege towers. But it didn't look like any of the siege towers went down. So the defenders basic um, on the back foot right now. Hmm, pretty big losses for the defenders again. 116 kills to 76. 70. Uh, half of that, I believe, would be a village watchman. This ballista, putting up a ballista here, keeps them away from the front door, which is really good. A mortar suppressing this uh, supply point. I would not be too terrified of getting hit by a mortar on the supply point when you got something as strong as a Madao or Iron Reaper. Um, they are looking... Whoa! This is an awesome position to put a ballista. This wall will protect your ballista very much so. A very difficult... Um, Hard ask, I would say, to just stand there and take this ballista shot. Losing more and more. Two more tertials go down. Goes high, in fact, here. The ballistas will win the day. Definitely going to be... Um... Definitely going to change the tide where most of these ballistas will basically one tap uh one tap tier fives every tier five is a huge loss and with this many ballistas jesus uh i would say this is the bad part <laughs> when you're going in with double tier fives ballista shots will just wear them down two units at a time whoa EFF taking out one of the heroes with a ballista shot, and that was a pretty far one. Um, definitely not one a not not a shot that I would take. Um, could send the farmers up to take this fight, but does look like the hero just straight up intercepted. 
Man. Those ballistas are wreaking havoc. Still wreaking havoc here. These uh, banner guards. Probably banner guards not too, too hairy here. You really just need to keep the banner guards around for the main man. The uh, banner holding. The ba person holding the banner. Iron Reaper is chopping the center of that Medal. Sacrifices to the Iron Reaper, but uh, with a little bit of support, wins that handedly. Oh, Iron Reapers with support. Just chopped down another Medal on the left-hand side. Wow, they are swinging everywhere. What is... Just letting both the supply points go. Um, Tid, you really got to make a stand somewhere. If you don't fight them on one side, you gotta fight them on the other side. But you just gave up both of the both of the uh, both of the things. Ah, you gave up both of the supply points. I don't think a behold is going to be any good. Man, we got some trebs flying in. We got the cataphracts just roaming around, waiting for an engagement. But it's just like, EFF could just waltz right into B, take it. And, like, you got both the Metallus whores here being defended by basically nothing. I could, I could, you could ride a cataphract straight up here. Uh, I don't care, because, like, what, what is, what is two Metallators, one, um, one Tertial going to do? I don't think it's going to be able to shut them down. Halberdiers and Imperial Pikemen able to cut down the Cataphracts. Uh, marching on nothing, EFF makes a mistake there, but I mean, like, the resistance from Tid is not very strong right now. Whoa, Tid catching two heroes out. We also have a battle here. That Treb could take out those Outriders. Oh, man, that's very unfortunate. Missing the massive pile here of Medals really should have swung them swung them down around and straight into the back here that would have been way better but with the b point captured um eff is pushing on forward towards the base point and a collapse of the entire defense um my goodness like eff definitely showing massive dominance while uh tid is just continuously giving ground and only when it's the last moment do they react this is um this is very important when you're defending you got to choose your locations because you can basically give up the entire city you got to choose where you want to defend you can you have the advantage in choosing which side you want to defend the best sections of these maps are next to the stairs next um next to the stairs on top of the wall, you can't suppress them, and that front gate. This B section here, you have to defend these supply points if you want any power at B. As you saw, EFF just slowly crept up. Massive win. We got a massive setup here now coming in from Tid. We got Royal Janissaries, some um, tertials. Over the wall, Shenji. Nice. Very good position to throw over the wall. A couple of the grenades will get blocked, but in the end huge pressure as even a mortar being set up um got two sets of shenjis out for the defenders five minutes ago making use of all of that time eff definitely definitely wants to win this in one push making absolute work on the setup here let's have a look at how many here we go
go. EFF is down to two. Two. Just two. And uh, both sides down to just two. Um, two artilleries left. Lots of revives. Only 14 revives left for Tid. I think someone's permadeath. I might be wrong about that. Already presenting themselves on this side. Can't just uh, simply shoot them. I would. Um, let me just double check. I think this guy is dead. Yes. I think the guy who DC'd is dead permanently. Holy cow. Tid is down maybe two guys now. EFF has absolute advantage with... Uh, with 15 players versus 13. Now they come in. Uh, I believe someone charged in with their banner guards coming out from EFF, slapping this left hand side. Right hand side responds, but did not stop the tide. Cataphrax taking a massive turn there. Did you see that? That was kind of cool. Basically doing a Tokyo Drift out through, but EFF getting caught on the secondary line here. Medals still filling in. Oof. Those tertials have pulled out their swords, but lots of cavalry gonna sweep on through. I don't think there's very much in Medal's left to hold against his cavalry. Those two cataphracts really made a mess of things coming in through the Medal's and chucking a fit at the gate here. But EFF takes this attack handedly, easily crushing the defenders at every turn. I don't think they suffered very many losses, as you can see. Almost three times the losses coming out from Tid here. Just throwing in the last ditch effort. Someone actually made it to the point. Uh, I take that back. EFF. Um, EFF actually just lets them get on the point. This is very strange. But in the end. In the end, EFF still wins. It does sully my heart. It does sully the victory, I believe, when you. Uh, do not cap or do not grab the point when you are winning. It is, uh, I think it's bad sportsmanship for the attackers in particular to not finish the map match. But otherwise, EFF, congratulations, you have won against Tid. This is a scoring phase, so Tid might come back and win against some other teams to fight against EFF. I'm not sure how the scoring phase realistically works out but other than that um let's have a, a look at the scores we got eff scoring very high here total damage only coming in at uh 1.6 mil 800 from the uh well hang on wait hmm. damage damage taken all right damage taken is kind of low if i do say so uh, can get really can get higher. Oh wait, no. Oh, hero damage. So damage to this is damage that was done to heroes. Okay, so combining those two together is almost one mil. All right. I'm getting these numbers mixed up. So actually, the performance out from the top performer here uh, doesn't actually reflect accurately. It's really also funny because he uh, friendly fired a lot. Probably a friendly fire Treb by accident. But, um, hmm. Good support points by the looks of it. Probably it's CC coming out from the pike. You'd be very surprised how much CC those guys can dish out. A good gauge of how strong players are is uh, for unit counts. Getting above se um, 700, I think, is a top mark in... Um, tournament play. So let's count how many people from EFF got over 700. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 people going above 700. That means uh, that means they killed an entire warband's worth of units, which is 
very good in my opinion. But Tid, not very, oh, it looked like none of them did. Again, doesn't look like anyone really, really stuck around. Or, like, Tid did not offer a very solid defense, even their top scorer mainly taking damage taken and um, really, really struggling to deal that damage. Good support points, though. So they were able to dish out the um, CC or others. But I'm just going to chalk it up that EFF was just the better team. Definitely better setup. And um, definitely better defense. Definitely better attack. Good overall. Good overall teamwork. They fought together. And they pushed together. Tid, I'm not sure what they were doing. The entire time it felt like individual solo players, not sure what they were planning to do. Uh, sorry, I know what they were planning to do, but it's just they were, un they were unable to respond against a solid strategy here. Tid, definitely a bit clueless when it comes down to where to take fights and where to defend. Um, giving up those supply points was a huge mistake. Both of them being, both of them being given up for free. Um, Tid making a lot of tactical mistakes by having some players out of position and definitely not grouping up and taking fights together. Taking fights on individual um, on individual fronts is not a bad idea, but when one side gets overwhelmed too easily or very fast without a corresponding response from the defending team or either teams, um, you're you're just losing. You're just losing units for free. Bad exchanges are bad, and it will uh, show for the rest of the match. Alrighty. There is a lot of time. We've got 20 minutes before the next set of battles begin, so I will be back. And um, next battle I will be watching is JKKT versus MJY, which is the Jerk Ultras. Jerk... Uh, Jekt, Jekt Ultras, uh, Ultras, uh, versus, um, Man, Jia Ying, Man Jia Ying, I think that's how you say it, but, uh, until then, I'll catch you guys in a little bit. I join it? Toss me down. Toss me down. Yes! Alright, I take the back. We get to actually watch an extra match here. Someone, um, so we get to actually know the results of QJ versus NOP. Um, just double check the, I'm um, just double check the, um, Double check the names. Quinn Jun and NOP is. Otherwise, nope in this scenario. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? No plan. No plan? No plan. Alrighty. They should start the match very soon. Otherwise, we're going to collide heavily with. Um, we're going to collide with. Uh, the second set of matches if this does not start. I think we're just waiting on the last two from Nope to arrive. So, um, 
what it means to come down to the grassland, otherwise the field battle, for a third match. It means that someone, or other, um, it means that both the teams won their battles. Well, won one battle each. So, it could have been both of them winning their defenses or winning their attacks. This is... This is exciting. A battle here on Grassland is... Could... I mean, historically it's been on Emerald... Uh, Emerald River. I hate Emerald River. Absolutely terrible map. Not very fun to watch. I think nearly every single observer here, um, observer yeah, casting right now, is here for this uh, for this one. So, Whoa, hopefully this gets. Hopefully this battle starts out real quick. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just waiting around. Wait another room. <gasps> what are you doing? Come on, come on, come on. You have to start the match soon. This field battles can go on for 15 minutes. I think I think he got ejected. Oh, finally! That's very unfortunate for whoever um, for who <laughs> whoever Observer Twenty Two is. I think I stole someone's spot as well. There's a limited number of spots for Observer. You're kidding! Oh my god! JKKT! I mean, Ardenor, you're... You're fighting in JKKT. That's hilarious. Oh my god. Hey, I'm gonna be su- I'm- I'm gonna be super- I'm gonna be super crew- I'm- I'm- Oh man, that's gonna be- I'm going to be watching you so closely. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um... Alrighty, hello, hello, hello. We're looking at Grassland Assaults. QJ versus Nope. QJ being uh, Quinn Jun and NLP being Noplan. Noplan. Um... Oh, looking at some very familiar faces. I've seen Us um Ustia na 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 three, Ratman. Uh, these guys does look like they're from Nope. Uh, before I think uh, their official name was also No Plan before. Uh, some of the names I don't recognize. Mainly, mainly probably the non-English names. I can recognize uh I can recognize what they are, but I just can't remember if I've seen them before. Uh, Quinn Jun, I think I've heard of the team before, but I didn't watch any of their matches. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't even talk about the units, but it does look like a massive setup of Medals and, um, Medals and Cataphracts. Oh, wait. Mixture of Medals, Cataphracts, and Keshig's coming out from Nope. And QJ going pretty heavy on the, um, pretty heavy on the infantry. 
Uh, this is this is going to be very interesting how they plan to uh, plan to battle QJ. Uh, wish you the best of luck, mostly because. Infantry has a lot of restrictions here on such a wide and open map. Does look like a double. Whoa! NOP going in for a massive seaside push. One person from QJ is going to intercept. We already see four players from QJ recognizing the massive push. Pulling off. B is grabbed. Nearly every single infantry is heading back to C for the defense point. This could be, uh, this is going to be bad because you need to intercept them here, right across this plane. This is, would be a great battle, I mean, a great push down, and, oh my god. They already have advantage here on the C point. They are grabbing it, but no intercepts, come on! Here comes a charge from the side, smack some Simitadals. Uh, Medal's not getting CC, that's very impressive. The Shenji getting smacked as well. Whoa! Control of the Medal's falling to pieces as the heroes at the front sacrificing themselves to hold C. They're pushing, pushing up. I do believe a contingent now at... Nope. Really need to keep that cavalry moving. They actually got Medal's here. Massive pickup. But C is still in contest. Sweeping out a lot of those heroes, not even a single person, not even a single person alive at sea now. That is, that is depressing. Lots of cavalry, lots of infantry to move up, but every single one of your heroes dying as they go in to defend sea. Massive advantage here. Heaps of pressure as this squad here will continue to push towards the supply point, grabbing that supply point, making B very difficult to defend. When B is difficult to defend is when your reinforcements takes much longer than their reinforcements. You, This contingent just keeps holding on. They're already pushing in for the center. Um, I think bad timing. This Medal here is sacrificing themselves. Keshik also sacrificing themselves. Uh, not very little gain. Massive pickups. But here comes a Medal in the backhand side. So it will be a Medal against Medal. But I think they're just going to try to win with sheer mass now. Cataphracts in the back, just slapping, slapping. Oh, more cavalry. We got some Keshik and some Winter Sars, finishing off them at B. We missed a battle here uh, at the C point, but it's going to be a triple cap for Nope. Nope definitely knows how to do their field battles. Taken QJ by surprise. QJ unable to defend C, unable to grab C uh, um, that they didn't. Um, take C in the first place. Now, they have a triple cap. The longer this triple cap goes on, the more it goes down, the clock is ticking. One set of a Dow here on the C point as two people distracting them at supply point. This is, this is crazy. This is crazy. Even, I think they won. Oh my goodness. Um, the two players here at, on the supply point took it back. And they just killed the heroes. They won that side. They're holding the C side massively. Now QJ is sending a contingent over to the A side. But Nope is moving to intercept. Keshig's very fast. Very far. Um, we'll get to the A point. But question is. They they won't grab it. As the Medals are almost there. To, uh, I'd give them 10 seconds. Before they're solid on that point. But even then. You won't have enough time to capture anything back. Uh, QJ getting smacked into Bolivian. Ah, uh, no. Well, yeah, I mean, QJ, half of them are pikes, realistically. Um, but at this point, I think, nope, with their division of... Well, I mean, you've got some outliers. Got quite a few pole axes, two short throws. But that was... Whoa, that was a fast match. Absolutely deleted there. Holy cow. Um, honestly, I didn't even catch that they had banner guards. QJ. Um, not very experienced in field battles there. 
Wow, getting taken by surprise by that AC, AC push. Man, that is, I love to, I love to see it, but at the same time, definitely QJ. How did you hold up against Nope on the siege battles if you can't even do field battles? But then again, uh, give you the benefit of the doubt. Field battles is not something you play commonly, but when it comes to the cider, it is everything. Um. What I was doing, I was just going to give you a quick rundown. Um, again, nope, taking advantage really quickly, mostly taking out the heroes. Look how many hero kills they got, and look how many death these guys got. Someone actually got permadeath! Holy shit! Someone from QJ getting permadeath in the middle of that. That's uh, pretty impressive. One guy definitely outperforming everyone else with massive, massive kills. Probably on a cavalry user. No, no, no. No, no, no. Three. Good job. Uh, poor performance out from everyone. I think the guys at B probably are the guys with the higher points. Did catch a free medal, and but in the end, everything here, out of everything, um, QJ coming down to a field battle. The prowess of cavalry and strategy when you uh, when you're committing and definitely the flanking is crucial. Unable to protect your flanks, unable to get a solid lineup. That C section, so fast. Cavalry moving in so fast. Straight away, Nope needed to intercept that. Infantry coming in, and they come in through the top, killed off the heroes. Killing off the heroes, absolutely great job. I think, um, I think they did amazingly well, and, um, Nope. But other than that, I need to get into the next battle! What's the password? <laughs> Thank God that didn't go any longer than it did. This will also be on Hidden City. Double Hidden City for today. I think a lot of matches are just being played on Hidden City. Um. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh. Oh, yes, Richie. That supply interrupt was so massive, but they're winning. They're winning so hard in hero battles there. Um. I don't believe, I don't believe, um, QJ had a chance with the number of heroes they were losing. They were losing heroes out the wazoo. A very impressive display from... Uh, when you slot block. Yeah. I don't like slot blocking. Slot blocking sucks. People do it because they don't want to fight. Fine, whatever. You don't want to fight, you don't want to fight. I'll just go fight someone else then. Suck. I don't know how to make this so that you can see this properly. Alrighty, the next battle should start shortly. We're just waiting on three more players. Two from the JKKT side and one from the MJY side. Again, I did just... Uh, I did put in... Um, this is a three minute delay, but like... 
I did. I, I put in the other matches. So you guys, if you want to go look at those, I'm gonna be looking at the uh jerked. Oh, I think it. I think it's like wrecked. Jacked. 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 Mm, I I feel like saying jerked. Jacked. Jacked ultras and man. Jia Ying. Ma Jia Ying. Man Jia Ying. Man Jia Ying. Man Jia Ying. Ying. Uh, so we have Jack Ultras versus Mang Jia Ying. Otherwise, um, Jack KKT versus MJY. On the Hidden City. So a double Hidden City again. Let's hope we get a good match. Lots of pressure as we get to watch Arnanor. He did come in and talk on my chat, so I'm definitely watching, gonna be watching you very closely. Um, what the hell? Um, the observer we just had left. What the hell? Ref left. Yeah, we we don't have our ref is the ref left. Probably. Probably. saying let's give it five minutes as if you're like hosting this thing. Booming tech needs to get that guy back in. Click to cancel. Cancel! Trying to. It's very funny in fact. Um, you really need the ref to be in control. I think everyone's leaving now because there was a call. Call to join a new, new one. Yeah, there it is. Thought so. That was funny. Don't forget, guys, uh, this is on three minutes delay. Have to, since uh, we'll be mm, observing three minutes in game. Who names, who names a house after themselves? Because I just, because I just realized that one of the guys from JKKT is Jekt.
Ref is running away. Let's go! I actually have no idea where who either of these teams are. I am a little bit biased and I just want um, Arnonor to get his ass whooped. But let's hope they both play well. I'm gonna be very crucial. I'm gonna be very critical to see how well these boys are gonna do. I hope the f I hope for you for the best. I hope our ref gets uh, gets his ass in gear and get those observers down because uh, JKKT or Jerk um, Jack is still missing. Yeah, still missing two guys. One guy now. Or it's gonna be 14 v 15. Also, sorry for the backlog. Um, I don't have, uh, I don't check the feeds here normally because I get a sound. Thank you, Spencer TV, for following me about an hour ago. I'm sorry that I couldn't respond to your follow. But are we ready for 14v15? Is it 14v15? Does, uh, Jack have a 15th player? Are we waiting on the 15th player? This is strange. This is Jet. Let's go! Yes, I'm playing, I'm running the, uh, Jex. And who's this? I was, sorry, like, who names a team after themselves? Yeah, 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 I, I, I know they're called Jex Ultras, but what I meant to say was that, who names a house, a team, whatever, <laughs> After themselves. This is three minutes delayed, but I hope you guys get it. I just I just think it's really funny. Um the referee should be asking if they have a fifteenth player. Uh otherwise but this is a massive delay here. We're just what we're literally just been sitting here. Um I'm sitting here for five old minutes. Sexy Kebab also runs a house called Kebabs. True story. Let's see how EU does. So you're telling me, so I have no information about these teams. I, I have barely have any information about these teams, but so you're telling me that um Jex are is an EU team. They've come to they've come to the they've come to the um they've come to this version. Well, I say this version. They've come into the Asia division to come fight. That is very interesting. Absolutely interesting. Let's see how let's see how these guys do. This is gonna be super savage though. I mean like if you're playing with
If you're playing with only 14 players, then that's very that's very interesting. Still waiting. One guy crashed. Man, does he need to restart his like entire life? He come. All right, all right. Oh, there he is. About time. About time. About damn time. Finally, we got the last guy in. Ah, <laughs> oh. a fourteen v fifteen. Do you think it's an easy win? Do you think EU is going to be better than Frontier? Well, let's see. Um. I haven't checked completely, but I'm not sure if Crusaders gonna have their usual. Uh, I, I'm wondering. I'm wondering if Crusaders are still gonna be the defending champions. Uh, Crusaders have been on the down low uh, since their main team have moved back to the China, um, China, China mainland server, otherwise called the Vanguard server. We do cross server with them from time to time. Um, that's that's not Crusaders. Uh, not Crusaders in particularly, but players from Vanguard, so you might get Crusaders. Three minutes to lay. Are we ready? Love is in the air. It's so beautiful. Alrighty, we're gonna come. Finally, we're gonna start the next set of battles. We got JKKT versus MJ. Uh, damn it. MJY. MJY. On the hidden cities. Hidden of all cities. But, what do we have here? Short sword galore. Two moles. I think this is the first time I've seen moles today. Two short swords. I mean, two long swords actually. One, two, three, four, five short swords. Not five. Just five? I thought that would be six. One, two, three, four, five. Just five actually. I'm, I'm, I'm like miscounting these somehow. Two pole axes. One musket. One jewel blade. Jewel blade is in, uh, in the shitter. I'd say. Um, let's see how well he does. Two metallators. Looks like they got specialized range users here. Specialized range units, double infantry. We only got we got three, four cataphracts coming out for JKKT. Um, very interesting lineup with palace guards, fort brachios, and halberdier sergeants. This is a. Ooh, we got some heavy shields. Those are the imperial spear guards. MJY also had some interesting picks with the claymores and the banner guards. The banner guards. Whoa! What is these alchemists doing out on the field? Um, Got to be very interesting. Also, some Royal Janissaries, so match up with Royal Janissaries on either side. Three Royal Janissaries for MJY, and two for, um, Jerked. Did they play, or when is the match? Kebabs? Kebabs, probably. I don't know when their matches are. I'd have to cross-reference, since there's abbreviation for teams and stuff. Oh. Alrighty, attacking first we've got Jex. Um, Jex is attacking first. So, let's see how well they go for the attack. Whoop. We got a nice even split. We got four, five guys there. Ten guys on the front. Starting off with... Does look like they're gonna MJY gonna go with a standard approach. Trebbing, what are we trebbing here? Trebbing this cannon. Hmm. Uh, 
one of the cannons on the left-hand side. Cannons going to destroy. We got Metallators. How many Metallators do we have for the defending team? I didn't count that. One, two. Just two? Just two for the defending team. Normally a third one would be excellent. Ah, very surprising that they bring them on top of the wall this time. Realistically, uh, just putting them down on the street has been quite effective. Get them down on the street. Have them pointing, shooting, uh, shooting around the backside, around about here. And that should take out the tower very easily. Though they're making very, very little progress. This thing is halfway through and only halfway down. This one, pretty much dead. Um, on a friendly note, this house here actually might save a little bit of shots here. You really need to move these guys a little bit to the, uh, well, my left here now. But move them across just a little bit and you get from, from the side. But this middle siege tower will go down. I'm just concerned about this left-hand siege tower. Left-hand siege tower getting shot by one cauldron so far. This cauldron will take it down by the looks of it. Another treb. Trebs being used on the wall ones. I'm not. I'm not a fan right now. Normally these front sec. Um, these front. This cannon actually took out the siege. Um, the siege tower, which is very surprising since there's so many. Normally these things get taken out lickety split but we also have a cannon on the front section that cannon finally gets destroyed um jerked actually have to climb the wall to take them out cannons in the back not really good enough to shoot by the looks of it loses his horse you got three horses so hmm, surviving so far let's see what you're doing Arnonor. Arnonor, you're shooting in the back here But anyway, still a lot of available um, available cannons. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got about half of the artillery available for the defending team, and the attacking team has all of their artilleries available. First generation siege towers have gone down, and the respawns are making their way through. So let's see, let's see. Front door broken through. You're gonna let some metallators just run in? No. Interesting setup. We got a lot of non. We got a lot of blind spots here. MJY definitely relying heavily on bracing their medals in very particular section. I definitely take advantage of that. Uh, only being a single medal here. Um, does look like someone has spotted it. Could send something to contest it. Doesn't look like anything going to be coming in to contest that medal. Very easy to abuse a unit that's not being controlled. Uh, I mean, like, I could, you could walk in there with muskets and just shoot them. We got two cauldrons being placed very close to each other. A nice treb here will delete them both. But realistically, whoa, the siege tower double jump down. Gotta try to intercept. Nice teamwork. But it does look like someone gets caught. He won't be finished off. Nah, doesn't look like anyone's going to follow up. Just going to be a solo. But the pike will get out very easily here. Triple dash back. Mole's very good in a front-on confrontation. Right-hand siege tower actually gets up on the wall. I think someone sacrificed their life to get it up on the wall here. Did he get tossed down? His horse is dead. Someone's horse is dead. Well, we saw two horses dying for this now. Kicker Ghost DE. Doing another climb. A lot of climbs here. We got one siege tower up here. This could be a bad decision for um, Jerked if they decide to go in for it. A treb coming in from which direction? Oh, a couple of Medal kills. Probably worth it, but realistically, not very much gained. Lots of damage on that medal, so you could uh, take advantage of that by full forcing it now. We got the palace guards, some setup. We got pikes. Did look like nope. Doesn't look like anyone was hit there. Another siege tower making their way, but Talator is still shooting. The siege tower is going to send it down to the ground, I think. Left hand siege tower did go down as we watched before. So you're gonna have to make a move within the next two minutes, otherwise you're gonna run out of time. So 
what is your plan? We've been watching this a lot tonight. Is if the siege towers do not make it to the wall, what is your plan? Um, one culverin left left for the defenders, but I'm not sure whether or not this thing's going to this thing gonna make it. I think someone's gone down to try to delay it for a split second, and it does make it to the wall. Ooh. Everyone's just bodying, bodying this one short sword. Poor Saka as he gets collapsed by the Royal Janissaries. Alright, there might be a simultaneous push here as Surf's just waltz up. I don't know what your plan is. You can bait out the rest of the Trebs. It could be a good exchange for you to hold them on only two Siege Towers, but it could also be very, very bad. I would definitely take this section here, though. You are semi-protected from Trebs, but doesn't mean Trebs won't come through. Although, staying on one side is not very good, as pressure from both sides is very important. We got some Royal Janissaries here in a prime position to squeeze once these guys make a move to push upwards. That is... Oh, if he actually did that, that would have been hilarious. They're switching sides... This is bad, actually, because this side will be pretty solid. You can't treb this effectively. And this water brush here will move across. Everyone's moving across right now, so... Let's see. Royal Janissaries take the front. No solid pushes, but we got an Imperial Pike marching through. But the Royal Janissar the Iron Reapers actually followed up with a big old smash. But here comes the squeeze as more and more troops fold in. But the squeeze is not strong enough as both Iron Reapers and Royal Janissaries rip right through those medals. Nicely done. I believe those were Flamers and some... We've got some Grape Shots at the very front here. Iron Reapers versus Iron Reapers with medals. Some backup. Massive losses for the defending side. That mass is deadly. Huge losses. Maybe a massive friendly fire trip? No. Alrighty. Um... Not sure what these Metalator dead bodies were doing here, but a good win for the attackers right now. Uh, you are losing lives as well. Not very good. Not very good at all for the defending team. They're not prepped. So, Jerked going straight for the right-hand side. Good idea. Only need one person to take up A. Get the advantage while you still can. Can't really, can, can't really stop them right now because A hasn't been grabbed. This is the funny thing, it takes about 20 seconds to grab A if you have three people, but if it takes longer if there's only one person capping it. So, you have to fight them on the supply point, which could be bad. Those claymores, bad positioning, and they're retreating now. Not good, not good at all as it gets clapped on. Finally, with a cap, they can finally contest this right hand side. More units pulling up. Bad, bad, bad timing as well. Those medals need to wait. Whoa, big, big Shenji grenade. Infantry just slapping their way through. It is a absolute death ball right now. Good strategy. I mean, good time to pull back. But the only the important thing here is um, Jerks will also be able to re resupply, reinforce, um, resupply right now. So those Shenji grenadiers will have their grenades back got a lot of cavalry coming out we got two sets of cavalry maybe three we got three sets of cavalry coming out for jerks they've split off in multiple directions they're not going to take them straight on like you'd expect because definitely the firepower coming out from those battalators will definitely hurt on the turn let's see how mjy takes this coming in through the center very good closes in the gap as much as possible and reduces the effectiveness of range at this in this scenario i would set up i would set up a multi fit but whoa both sides using um uh, both sides metallatoring each other with those malconetis or metallators effectively losing out on the exchange as they pull back in fact I think, the, I think the aim on the back line here is not solid enough. 
grape shots also coming in huge advantage for uh, jerks also having reinforcement just coming in from one side this is bad 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 flamers making an absolute mess of the front line for the defenders uh, the defenders sorry getting messed up by flamers look at them go I think there's only one there's a couple of guys left actually but it's not a full squad by the looks Medow's coming in late. A good pickup for B. Looks like we had a multi fight. Mass. Whoa! Mass Claymores, Iron Reapers at the back here. Claymores and Iron Reapers definitely could make a absolute mess out of these things, but. Getting stopped here is a bad place. MJY contesting these cataphracts with their own cataphracts, but does look like they've lost the advantage. I take that back actually. I think um I think Jerk lost the advantage in Cataprax. But one both both Cataprax are down. Two Cataprax are down with one Cataprax still alive for the defending team. I'm not wondering what happened to the third one. Probably I missed it. But they're swarming in through definitely a trickle as heavy losses have come through. These farmers will delay them for a little bit, and looks like the cataphracts have been let go. A little bit of a, a uh, little bit sad to see cataphracts get let go like this, just to delay for time. Um, whoa, bringing out the banner guards to. I'm not sure what you're gonna do, but we can have a top line howardier sergeant, which is uh, interesting to say the least. Howardier sergeants top line are very um, improves their basic damage and increases their damage on the charge and after the charge oh my goodness you've got nothing here a lot of you guys are dead and here comes more surfs surfs for the eating royal janissaries oh the slur is harmful but grenade slaps those surf units into oblivion I don't think MJY has anything left 900 uh, 900 deaths Not particularly strong by the looks of it. Good start. GG. GG is all the round from Jerks here. Whoa, Pike gets on in the back. Hmm. Taking fights with the Claymores. Again. Not a not a terrible loss on the top of the wall for MJY, but definitely does look like um, JKKT has way better strategy and good, better setup. Lots of kills coming out when it comes when it comes down to the uh, front on battles. Lots of permadeath coming out for the defenders. Very little deaths. Someone actually getting close, but looking at jerks. Luca also doing very well, hitting the 1,000 unit kills. Well, unit score. That's very good, in fact. We got Ardenor getting five kills and nine assists. A little bit uh, scoring a bit lower for the units. So definitely going in for those heroes. Do does look like we've got a situation where someone was running with Shenji because I highly doubt that a short sword getting that many kills but he could be proving me wrong short sword are very good chasers so they do put up a good pressure also with the uh, another short sword getting five kills lots of kills coming out for um, jerked scoring very high I do believe these two probably running either the strongest infantry or um, running around with the cataphracts but I kick that back. The cataphracts not doing too well. Not doing too well for either side. They just kind of challenge each other. MJY. Good, good, good effort at the beginning. Again, suppressing those siege towers means more time to you. The only problem is, is that when it comes down to the front on battles, you lost heavily to the flamers. Not sure who was controlling the flamers, but those flames really messed up one of your sides. Um... And when it comes to a direct pitched battle, uh, you do suffer a massive issue of heroes dying 
or not being able to get into the battle. Alrighty, the next battle, we're going to have MJY attacking with um, JKKT or Jerked uh, defending. Taking in consideration the well-placed and committed attackers here, the Grape Shots were pretty effective. Um, the spike for the B-point was a mistake from MJ, um, MJY losing losing the sh um, losing the range battle when it was just one metallator versus one metallator uh, it is it would be considered a massive loss when you lose the advantage like that I also think the strength in numbers do put on a big display here not take being able to take advantage of a crush at that point. It was very interesting to see that MJY failed to crush the sheer mass, but it also proves that MJ, um, JKKT, Orject, was very committed to that push, swarming in. When you try... I think another thing is, is that there was too much space. Too much space for... Um, too much space for Orject to basically get up onto the wall. Once they get up onto the wall like that, you, you've already lost because every single 15 people are there they can respond to either side and you're tr at the at the present time you're trying to push in and it's like condensing them into a stronger ball they're all there they're all ready and they're not they're not the one trying to push against you they're already up on the wall and you're crushing them into a denser um, a denser pack so it is more easier to again resist your push Anyway, Iron Reaper's Royal Janissary is definitely leading the way the entire time. I think the Royal Janissaries from Jerked definitely outdoing themselves, crushing a lot of those medals easily. But don't have they have to give the Iron Reapers a um give a shout out to the Iron Reapers. Iron Reapers just fully on, just letting them go, committing them into the center of those battles. Really, really tough unit, but again. Royal Janissary Iron Reapers are very difficult to deal with. You can't use medals to slow them down anymore. You got to use a different tactic. You got to think of something else because uh, Jerk definitely thought of using the Flamers to tip the battle in their favor, and it tipped their battle in their favor twice, massively, on two occasions: the one at A and the um the one on Siege Tower towards A, and the one at B when they were pushing up. Unfortunately, again, shield shields don't really get a very good rap. They just take damage, and that's about it. Good to see them around, but not very effective. We got to see the banner guards and the alchemists. Alchemists not doing too much. Banner guards not doing too much. They're just being thrown in to delay for time. Oof. I'm I'm just I'm just very interested to see what happens with the cavalry battle. I was watching the very I was watching the mass battle in that scenario, but I did not get to see how the cavalries worked out. We got around about three cavalries coming out from JKKT at the B point side, and I think two cavalries for MJY, but they kind of either cancelled each other out or fought other battles. Did see a battle at the back with Claymores and Village Watchmen against the uh Claymore's Village Watchman, and I think a Reaper at the front against two of the Medals. So they tried to flank by the looks of it, but it ended in failure. But enough about that battle, let's move on to the next battle. We have Hidden City with MJY attacking. Jack is going to be defending this time. Lots of heavy armor, do have to point out, so much heavy armor coming out from Jerk. Going out with the five short swords yet again. We got one, two, three, four short swords this time. We got some more pole axes, probably for that lockdown pressure. Two moles. Again, the moles are a cool pick. I do think they are very strong when it comes into front bat um, front battles. We got MJY coming in with five short swords and five pikes, uh, relying on some of the stronger one. Uh, one tone classes, although Pike is quite good in all rounders of aspect, um, aspect. I think their mobility is the key. 
again, coming out with the Banner Guards. Would love to see how they work the Banner Guards in, mainly because without a mass of Iron Reapers not really performing that charge reset, it does seem like a lot of Royal Janissaries got four royal janissaries coming out no metallators wait take that back there's one metallator one flamer and one shenji little amount of cavalry got two cataphracts coming out for the attackers we got one two three cataphracts coming out for the defenders lots of iron reapers and it does look like the royal janissaries have been yeeted off the um list for jk um jerked jerked not choosing to bring any royal janissaries after they performed super well for them on the attack is an interesting pick we have only two metallators coming out for um jerked so only two siege towers will be suppressed by them so they're gonna have to commit a little bit more cauldrons a little bit earlier but i think the three metallators from the matches we saw before as in like match um the matchup we saw uh, with EFF versus, um, bah, EFF versus the, the Tanglo, um, riders, riding, Tanglo, uh, Tickelo, Tickelo, uh, riding. <sighs> All right. Let's see if, uh, MJY has a better performance at taking out these artilleries. I did note that at the beginning of the battle, there was a real struggle to take out a lot of these artilleries. Starting off a little bit slow, nothing taken out so far. They treb that ballista, probably to stop the pressure. See, each tower is being taken down by just the natural so far. Natural still up on the wall. We got a Whoa, we got five mortars coming out from the front from MJY. Going to suppress those... Going to suppress those uh, cannons and stuff. Whoa, very impressive job. Taking out the cannons on the opposite side. One of the cannons actually just down here at the front. Not relying on the cannons at the front. That is... I mean, not relying on your natural spawn cannons to take out the cannons on the wall. That is very strange, I think. You can definitely take them out. Good job, Musket. Musket doing excellent work here. Oh, that's a bit awkward. Very good placement, in fact. I've seen people abuse this spot before. Um, placing on the back side of the stairs. I mean, like, it is it is a hard treb for this one. This is... This is a funny and very difficult spot. You just treb this section. Uh, trying to treb that section is very difficult. That... I don't think this cauldron will be able to get trebbed at all. I've sat on stairs before, and all of the trebs have missed me by inches. Either going to, um, even from the front or behind, just sitting on those stairs. But, MJY coming up, and... Coming up, and just... Smacking each other. Well, sorry. Short Sword smacks the cauldron, and he gets caught trying to jump down. Doesn't let him get down. Suppressing the front here. Blocks the unit count? Yeah, it does. But I like my web camera. How do you know it's me that's commentating? Rupert head? No cam. That's also another point. You don't get to see who dies. Troop counts at the top, by the way. You don't get to see how many troops died, that's all. But you don't get to see who died at all. Might move it back to the other side again. 
thing is, is there's not offer of any spots I can put my camera. How about here? Here's a good spot. I'm not using any units. Right hand siege tower gets down, left uh, middle siege tower gets down. Looks like this left hand siege tower will make it. Another trip on the culverin, but very late, I would say. Uh, kind of unnecessary now, since you have got that siege tower up on the wall. With the left hand siege tower making it making it MJY does seem to look to stack in towards that left hand siege tower. Still putting still putting on units to push these front siege towers, so they might have other avenues to get up onto the wall. Posturing here could be a very bad, 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 bad bad decision because this, uh, I mean, this entire length is trebable, so you could take a little look. Whoa, trying as he might. Nice backup from Jerk. Royal Janissaries kind of being let, uh, kind of just pushing their way through. So we're gonna have a battle here. Or not, Royal Janissaries pulled out before any real losses coming through. Yeah, that's a smart idea, man. Holland, bottom left is actually a smart idea. Bottom left is a good spot. I don't really, I don't really interrupt too much anymore. Swinging back around does look like the right hand siege tower did go down yet again. Royal Janissary is also moving back. End point position? What the end point position mean? Metallotors are still shooting. I don't think they put Arties at the end cap. Even if they did, they would place them here or over here. Oh, wait! They did. That's impressive. I wouldn't take those shots normally. I did not see that. I did not see that, actually. Woo! MJY, trying to get off the wall. Almost died. Alrighty. There was a push. I missed a massive push here, but it... It's, they pushed back with Iron Reefers, but Iron Reefers... Really struggling to kill those uh, palace guards, not palace guards, those spear, um, the spear guard. Whoa, just running straight into those Imperial Pike, walking, not the smartest idea. Wow, they're just chasing them down, really, whoa, a triple stack of Iron Reapers about to just waltz in. Oh my god, no, the Brazier, the Brazier! But otherwise, they just absolutely slaughter. They are absolutely slaughtering. Royal Janissaries and Iron Reapers moved on down towards to stop something, but Iron Reapers clearing up this pile. Your your flamers need to do something. They're about to be killed. Iron Reaper Death Ball is working and it is crushing. That is three sets of Iron Reapers just cutting down the enemy. Three sets of Iron Reaper all sharing the damage. MJ, why? Wow, a cataphract also sallying out. Lots of things going, lots of things happening all at once. MJ, why not having a foot to stand on now, as all of their units have just been deleted off this wall. I think this Iron Reaper pile has been the most effective thing out of everything. Ah, uh, banner guards. I'm not sure what you're doing alone. They have two minutes, two minutes, and they have. Barely any units out. They got some more Royal Janissaries coming out. 
This will be their last push. All of their medals will be committed to this push, but so many Iron Reapers. That Iron Reaper pile and those um, Nafan Guard. Nafan Guard's also coming out for the defenders. The defenders really going to hold this this one push because this is this is super 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 um, telegraphed. They're coming from this middle siege tower. There's no way they're not coming from this siege tower. And nice. We also got some Bolsack units coming out. Bastion Wild Flames hitting them from the side. Definitely, definitely going to slow down this push up onto the wall. Very little space as they turn the corner. They're going to find fight it right here on the side here. Medal's push forward, but here comes the absolute crush. This is the kind of aggressiveness when you're expecting a crush. So many Iron Reapers have been thrown at the front there. And lots of heroes still contesting. But bracing those medals could end those Iron Reapers. Iron Reapers taking many losses. But Flamers does a delete that... Uh, delete that medal for them. Well, CC the medal. They're pushing on through. I think MJY just... That's it. That's it for MJY. Uh, I don't think they got anything left in the uh, left in the bag. Uh, Treb, Treb, as you might, you're not going to change the f battle. But was that a charging? That was an Alp Halberdier, Alp Halberdier charging down, doing very well for themselves here. Jerked on the attack and on the defense, winning against MJY. I'm not sure what the Cataphracts are doing. The Cataphracts making a mess at the back line. Deleting that Demez Pikeman still. Oof. Finally gets killed. I think the cavalry here trading and trading with a medal. Trading one cavalry for each and a medal. Not very many wins. Hey, they actually have a Tundra Human left. Congratulations. Wow. Doing doing very good work. Very good work. Looks like we got uh Chenopel doing one thousand plus unit. Again, congratulations to Jerk winning against MJY. We'll get to see them again. Well we'll uh we might get to see MJY again, but the difference in teams is definitely apparent does look like mjy has got something something going on but uh jerked has all of teamworks down packed that iron reaper squad definitely knows where they wanted to go and what they were doing stay together stick together and kill together but doesn't discredit how strong MJY did perform. We've got two guys coming out with the 700 plus. Probably not every single player committing, but I think this has to do with MJY's um, ability to win some of the smaller battle. They're taking they're taking fights. I think this comes back to how they defended taking fights where they shouldn't and this comes to when they're attacking. They take fights because they could have won the fights and they did win a couple of fights. I mean, this guy getting out six kills probably in the smaller battles as a lot of times um, Jerk just lets their units do a lot of work and their short swords jump in and out to assist. But good job both teams. Congratulations Jerk for winning that battle. We got post analysis here. As you can see, overall, massive losses for... Um, for the attackers. Uh, it's confusing since blue is allied and I'm actually and it's actually means that hang on wait death count is allied. I'm allied with the attackers and the defenders are red. Actually that makes sense. Massive massive losses wait no that makes no sense that actually Yeah, that's reversed. I'm not sure. I, that's so weird. Like, death count? Enemies being the defenders? That should be the defenders. That... Weird? I'm surprised that they... Hmm. I'm surprised that they lost more.
Ah, no, that makes no sense at all. Because MJY is the attackers, and they lost more units, so this... So this should be MJY, this should be thing, and that means this... Ah, God, why is it so confusing? My allies are... Why is that... Re that's, that's confusing. My allies should be these guys, but this is reversed. Why is this reversed? Why is this reversed? That is so confusing. Anyway. That's enough about that. I mean... <clears throat> you gotta... You gotta give defending a little bit of um, a handicap. Uh, it's really easy to defend when they just suppress the siege towers. MJY not doing it too well at the in their own battle. But let's see if JKKT make it all the way to the um to the end. I'd love to see them face up against some of the better teams. MJY, definitely not the best of the best, but I love the performance from both teams. I don't believe that MJY was that bad. Actually, actually doing performingly very, very well. Um, first time I've actually seen them, I think. First time I've actually seen JKKT. Uh, you could shape up on your cannon skills, but, I mean, like, cannons are a little bit of a hit and miss. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I can't hit, I can't hit the broadside of a barn with that thing. And, um, I'm just going to check out, see if, uh, see if I can catch a third battle, since this, since, uh, maybe we'll get a third battle. But, uh, well, I guess I'll end it there. We watched two of, well, we watched, um, EFF versus, uh, nah. EFF versus TID, T-I-D, and then we watched JKKT versus MJY. We got EFF winning their bat battle and G um, JKKT winning their battle. Both 2-0. Tomorrow, no, I take that back, not tomorrow, on the 25th, on the Wednesday, so we're going to have a two-day break, so on the 22nd, um, on the 23rd and the 24th, there'll be no more battles, but we'll come back on the 25th. On the 25th, we have Group A being BXWL versus uh, Kami, K-A-M-I, and in the second match of Group A, we have H. X versus NLP, so we get to see Nope again. Um, actually, no. I'm going to be. I'll tell you. I'll tell you which battles I'm going to be watch after I tell you all of the groups. So Group B on the 25th will be um, GPPC versus XLZT, and the second match it will be um, VALK versus TKT. Actually. Group B gave up, so XLZT gave up against um, against GPPC, so and um, Valk gave up against KT um, KXT. That's very unfortunate. So there is no group, there is no B group for the 25th. We have for Group C on the 25th is GNG versus RN. In the second match, we have XMJY versus GST. I hope it's not uh, goods and services tax. It probably stands for something else. For Group D, we have Tid versus Anna, and for the second match, it's OF versus GT. Uh, this is an answer to Arnonor. He likes to see it straight. But yes, um, I think you're. I think you, you were too slow in taking out the natural spawn Artie. 
but you guys work super well together. You guys have a strong setup, and I love seeing those Death Ball of Iron Reapers just cleave their way through medals, whatever, and they just keep on fighting. It's an absolute, um, absolute uh, unstoppable force when those Iron Reapers just cut a path right through the enemy. Your usage of the Iron Reapers in, um, not the Iron Reapers, uh, the Royal Janissaries in your first match was uh, understandably cool, I would say, taking on the frontline medals very easily. But at the same time, I think um, I think the medals in both sex in both sectors really really underperforming when they're versing Iron Reapers and Royal Janissaries. So seeing them on the wall was probably um, in probably my opinion is an instant loss for whoever's using more medals. Since medals don't are not the strongest here, um, not the strongest infantry nowadays. Okay, for the ending segment on the 25th, so we have no more battle for the 25th, so I've just gone over that. I will be watching, I will be playing BXWL versus Kami, and for the second match I'll be watching XMJY versus GST. But I hope you guys enjoyed the show and I hope you like my commentary. I think this position here for my camera for now on, I think I think having the camera there is just important so that I'm not just streaming I'm not just streaming the battle. Uh I think I think I think um I think maybe if I don't know man. Not having my camera versus having my camera there. It could be it could be better just not to have the camera there. But I like I like to I like to leave my camera there. It's kind of like a watermark for itself. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I'll catch you on the 25th if you want to watch those battles. But other than that, my name's Azakai. Have a nice day. Bye now.